Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Garden of Grace Devotion. My name is Pastor Katie, and I'm one of the pastors at Trinity Lutheran Church in Lilburn, Georgia. Our passage for the Garden of Grace Devotion today is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses one to three. This passage is a favorite of mine, and I've offered a garden devotion on it before. However, something I read this week helped me to understand this passage in a new way. The passage from Hebrews chapter 12, verses one to three reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. What wonderful words. For the joy set before him. To follow Jesus' example, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. As a runner, I typically think of this passage related to running and the importance of letting go of everything that hinders and easily entangles. Otherwise, I can't run very well or very far. The more that I hold on to, the more encumbered I am, the more difficult the journey becomes. This week, I saw something that helped me understand this passage in a new way. Instead of having to do with living life on land, it offered a similar, a similar analogy at sea, on a boat. I came across this saying this week. It is attributed to a man named Lord Nelson, an English naval commander who was born on September 29th, 1758. And he died October 21st, 1805. The saying is, ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that gets in them. Don't let what's happening around you get inside you and weigh you down. The passage from Hebrews applies here too. The things that hinder, the sin that clings so closely, the things that are around me, when I invite them in to the boat, it can make things harder for me to stay afloat. It can make it harder for me to live in hope and joy that comes from the Lord. So I've started thinking a little bit about all of the different things that I put into my boat each day. What do you put into yours? When you wake up in the morning, fresh new day, what kind of things do you immediately sort of put in your boat? Do you begin the day with a prayer or maybe a scripture reading, perhaps a daily devotion? Do you begin your day maybe by looking at the news or talking to a friend or a loved one? Do you begin your day in silence? I've started thinking about all of the different things that I put into my boat each day. So many things, so many wonderful things, the love and grace of God that are thankfully always in my boat with me, whether or not I recognize it. Many blessings are in the boat with me as well. I am deeply thankful for the gifts of family and friendships that I've been given among other things. Sometimes a smile or a kind word from someone around me 
comes into my boat and I feel lighter. I was blessed by a woman at the deli meat counter the other day. Her, the blessing she gave me came into my boat. It helped me feel lighter. It reminded me of the love and grace of God. There are other things I put into my boat too though. Heavy things, unkind things, things that cause division, things that separate, things that don't glorify God. And then the boat gets heavier and it can start to sink a bit. Each moment of each day provides an opportunity though. As the author of Hebrew, Hebrews reminds us, let us look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so we do not grow weary and lose heart. Let us look to Jesus as to what we should put in our boat each day. Now, I've never been on a cruise. From what I understand, to some extent, there's got to be some kind of baggage check, right? Don't they check your luggage before you go onto a cruise? Because they need to see what you're bringing onto the ship, right? So what if Jesus, what if prayerful discernment in Christ means praying about the things that we let onto our virtual boat each day? Not our virtual boat like on Zoom, but our pretend boat that we all ride around in. What might it look like to notice things before we put them in our boat, before we take them on? What might it be like to think about it before we plop some of these things in our laps? What might it look like to pray and say, this thing that I'm carrying around, is it helpful? Is it hindering me? Or is it giving life? Is it helping me to be weary and to lose heart? Or is it helping me to serve God each day? So what's in your boat? What do you have in your boat that's weighing you down? What do you have in your boat that's giving you life? May we remember that no, member, no matter what we have in our boats, we have the love and grace of God in Christ Jesus with us. May we look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, to help us discern what we should, what is helpful, and what is not helpful to have in our boat each day. Thanks be to God for the one who journeys with us on land and sea and everywhere. Amen.